including the International Contemporary Ensemble and Italian Ensemble. Um, and I'm also a member here in Pittsburgh of an all-women's group who performs primarily women's music called the Cassia Ensemble. Um, this is the base of the instrument. And down at the base, you can see, uh, you can't see all the way, but there are seven pedals. And I don't know if you can tell, but all of these pedals can be put in one of three positions. It can be at the top here, in the middle, or at the base. These pedals are connected um, through an arm and then through the column of the harp to the mechanism at the top. As you can see up here, most strings have two of these little forks on them at the top of the mechanism. And what these forks do is change the pitch of a string. Since there's seven pedals, there's one pedal for each note of the scale. So this right here is a D flat. If I change the pedal to the middle position, it's a D natural. And once more, it becomes a D-sharp. So essentially, as you push the pedal down, the string is becoming shorter. Um, this is actually sort of a miracle of modern engineering. Uh, someone figured out how to place all of these forks in the correct position so that you do get a true D-flat, D-natural, and D-sharp in all octaves with these little forks. So most modern harps have three kinds of strings on them. Up top, because they're so susceptible both to weather and also to breaking because there's so much tension on them, they're made out of a nylon. In the middle, from about here, C down to the low A, they're actually made of wound sheep's gut which is supposed to produce a much richer tone than the nylon. And then down at the base here, there's an octave and a half of steel wound in silk, wound in steel, much like a guitar string. And actually, this octave and a half is what lends the harp its resonance. Um, these strings vibrate in sympathy with the rest of the instrument, and these strings, along with this extended baseboard right here um, produce the sound that the harp makes. So that's a little overview about how the harp actually works. Uh, the harp is actually an ancient instrument. I think the original idea um, was from the twang of a bowstring strung across an actual bow. Uh, and then someone wanted to make it a larger instrument and strung a number of strings across um, a sound box that helped with the resonance. There are numerous examples of the harp in Egyptian tomb paintings, also in early carvings in Mesopotamia. Um, interestingly, that in instrument didn't actually have a column, so structurally the strings had to be tuned much lower and it was supposed that it was sort of a bass instrument or like a bass banjo sound. Um, there are also concurrently being developed harps in um, Europe, and those were usually very small affairs that could be either sat on the lap or um, held to your shoulder while you actually walked or sang. And uh, those instruments usually had no more than 12 strings. So um, as music grew, there was a desire to allow the harp to be a lot more flexible. 
So the instrument itself got bigger, but also there's the problem of the harp not being able to be in all keys. Um, in order to be in a different key, you'd have to actually stop the music and physically tune the instrument. Um, and as early as 1690, people were working on this problem. Before then, there had been um, a number of different iterations that involved perhaps um, three columns of strings, uh, with some of them tuned to the same um, scale and the outer strings being tuned to the chromatic tones that would be required for a specific piece but those were like pretty structurally unstable and very difficult to play. Um, so the single action harp, which means that there's only one additional notch in the bass, um, was developed somewhere around 1690. And in that iteration, it had access not to 24 major and minor keys, but to five major keys and eight minor keys if you tuned it in the right way. Even after the development of the single action harp, um, harpists and composers wanted more, and the double action harp, which is what this is, um, came into being in 1801, uh, built by a French maker named Erard. Um, but at the time, the harp was much smaller, and so it was only used mostly for chamber music, um, very rarely for orchestral music, and very rarely for large ensembles other than orchestras. Um, it really came into its own in the early 20th century when uh, harp makers commissioned two pieces, one the Debussy Dances um, for harp and string orchestra and the Ravel Introduction and Allegro, both written in the early 20th century. And those were both written as showpieces for the new instrument that could stand up in orchestra and had the ability to play loud enough to be heard through the chorus of other instruments. No discussion of the modern harp could be completed without actually hearing the harp play. Uh, so I'm going to play for you a bit of George Friedrich Handel's Concerto in B flat, which is one of the earliest and best known works, or the modern double action. 